What's up, nerds? Welcome to NX21 Launch Week. NX21 is so big that we wanted to give it an entire week of articles and videos to tell you what we've been working on. It's going to be great. Let's get started. All right, pump the brakes for just a minute because before we get into NX21, we've got to talk about everything that came out in NX20, and that includes TypeScript project references for mono repos so that your TypeScript mono repo is fast now and you don't even have to wait for the Go rewrite. The NX RS Pack plugin came out of labs and makes it super easy to transition from those slow Webpack builds. That's followed by Angular RS Pack, which lets that speedy RS Pack build power your Angular builds as well. NX Import lets you build the mono repo that you've always wanted by helping you bring in external projects to your mono repo. NX Console introduced the MCP server so that you can give your LLM all the context that you need for your mono repo. Local caching is now powered by a database. We've got support for self hosted caches. That's not even everything. Check out our release posts to learn more. So, the two big things for NX21 are continuous tasks and terminal UI. Now, why do I bring those up together? Well, they work together. Each one makes the other one better. They're the peanut butter and jelly of NX21. Let's break it down. So a lot of your tasks in your workspace are finite. They start up, they produce some kind of output, and then they shut down. These are like your builds or running your unit tests. And with NX, you can configure certain tasks to depend on other tasks outputs. So like if you have an application that you need to build and it has a component library that it depends on that is also buildable, you got to go build that component library before you can build the application. This is called a task pipeline, but some of your tasks are not finite. They start up, they run for a while, and then you shut them down they keep running until you stop them. This is for things like serving an app or running your unit tests in watch mode. Now, NX has always supported these types of tasks, right? You've been able to serve your app since forever. So what's different about continuous tasks? I'm really glad you asked. The big difference is that continuous tasks can now be included in a task pipeline, which means other tasks can depend on them. So previously, tasks that were long running couldn't be part of a task pipeline because we need to know the output from one task before we can start the tasks that depend on them. And because these long running tasks don't have a stopping point, we don't know if they're done or not. And folks have gotten around this, right? Like you can set up a script that runs two tasks in parallel. You can open up two terminals. You can use something like concurrently to run things together, but that sucks. So we thought we can do better. So. With continuous tasks, you can have other tasks depend on these long running tasks. And it's easy. Check this out. To use continuous tasks in a task pipeline, you set them up just like you would any other task pipeline. Let's say that we have an application named Frontend. It has a dev target and we want it to depend on our backend being served. We add a depends on with our project of API and our target of serve configured. Now, whenever our front end is run with dev, it's going to also spin up the API with serve. Now, if the API project is using inferred tasks, we don't have to do anything else. But if we're using executors, then we have a little bit more configuration to do. And in this example, again, we're in the configuration for the API project. We're looking at its serve target, and we're just going to add this continuous equal to true. And now this task is marked as continuous and it can be used in a task pipeline. And if we run dev front end, then what we'll see is the front end running its dev target, API running its serve target, and all of our logs are nice and neat right next to each other in the new terminal UI. This opens up all kinds of possibilities for your developer experience. You can start servers that are required for your end-to-end -end test suite, whether that's your front end or your back end or multiple back ends. If you want to run code generators, like if you generate TypeScript models from an open API spec, now you can run those generators whenever your application is served. If you run integration tests for a package that needs a Verdaccio local registry running in the background to operate, that's possible. Essentially, anytime you reach to open another terminal window to run two things in parallel, stop. Use a continuous task. We're really excited about this, and we're going to talk about it more later this week. Let's talk about the other half of this delicious peanut butter and jelly sandwich of features, the terminal UI. Our new terminal UI takes over whenever you run a task in NX. And so instead of just seeing an output of logs, you're going to see 
tasks that are running in one panel and the log output from a selected task in the other panel. All right, so continuous tasks are awesome, but how is that related to the terminal UI? Again, thank you for asking. You're really engaged with the content and I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. So continuous tasks are a really big improvement, but they're also a challenge. Now that we're running multiple tasks in parallel, how do you handle the log output from that? You've encountered a similar problem when you run affected or run many, when all of the logs for tasks are kind of just like stacked up on top of each other. And it can be hard to figure out like, what are the logs from like one task or another? And now with the terminal UI, you can easily separate the logs into different panels to be able to see exactly what you're working on. We're talking about this more the rest of the week. So stay tuned. Listen, if you thought that was all NX21 was bringing to the table, first of all, rude. You should expect more from us by now. I think we've earned it. Second, we've also made the NX Gradle plugin better than ever. Now it's got two big improvements. First, we've introduced a Gradle plugin that provides NX with project graph information. Previously, we relied on the project report plugin for Gradle, and it didn't really give us enough, and it was pretty static in its output. Our new project graph plugin is built from the ground up to provide NX exactly the information that it needs from Gradle faster than ever. Secondly, NX now sends tasks to Gradle in batches rather than one by one. To test the performance, we forked the Spring Boot repo, migrated it to NX, and did some comparison between the original way of using Gradle to run the tasks, which resulted in CI times around an hour and 45 minutes. After that, we migrated to NX Cloud using DTE and our brand new Gradle plugin and found our results to be around 45 minutes. That's a savings of an hour. These changes make the NX Gradle plugin better than ever for managing your Gradle projects. Try it out and keep an eye on what else we have coming for the Java ecosystem later this year. Automated migrations have always been a hugely valuable part of NX. Last release, we brought migration documentation to help you understand better what's going on inside these migrations. Now we've brought the migration process to NX console so that you can step through migrations easier than before. In NX console, you'll see a new NX migrate panel. You can start your migration, and then it's going to go through all the steps that you've been doing manually before. First, by seeing what updated packages that we need, asking you to confirm that the packages look good, installing those packages for you. Once the packages are installed, you can start the migration by looking at the migrations that will take place as part of this upgrade. We can approve the changes, and then all the migrations are run. Last thing, let's squash those commits and finish our migration by giving it a commit message. React Router 7 is a huge step for the library and brings in a lot of the best ideas from Remix. Version 7 introduces modes which allow you to use the router with different strategies. The declarative and data modes can be built just like any other React application. But the new framework mode is closer to Remix, and so it needs a specific build tool. If you're using React Router in the declarative or the data modes, you can keep building your React application the exact same way you were before. But if you're ready to start a new app using the framework mode, or you're migrating a Remix app to React Router 7, we've got you covered. If you're migrating from Remix, the React Router team has got you with the docs. After you finish that migration, you can remove the NX Remix plugin and instead use the new React Router plugin. In NX21, release versioning has been re-implemented to make it a lot easier to handle non-TypeScript projects. An automated migration will update your project. You can still opt into the old versioning by setting a flag in your configuration. But you should really check out the docs to understand the new details because in NX22, the new version is going to be the default and will remove support for the legacy. All right, that was a lot, but there's actually even more in NX21. Check out the article for more, and definitely hit the GitHub release notes for all the nitty gritty details. Stay tuned for the rest of NX21 launch week. It's gonna be good. See you tomorrow.